I believe there are two kinds of kids. The first knows from a young age that they want to be a veterinarian when they grow up. But the second sees an injured bird that's hit their window and has an instinctual desire to nurse it back to health. The first kid may tell their parents that they want to be a lawyer when they grow up, but the second kid will not get up from the dinner table without an endless debate over their daily vegetable requirements. The first kid knows and says who they want to be when they grow up, but the second kid already is who they want to be. I happen to be the second kid. Innovation has been a part of my life for nearly all of it, but growing up, I called it duct tape. <laughs> I had a business. My parents drove me door to door selling duct tape pens, wallets, bracelets, and even flip flops. My mom taught me the importance of working hard, and my dad taught me the importance of passion, telling me that it was what made it work, not a death sentence. But maybe most importantly, they taught me to turn creative ideas into innovative action. Now, the process from creativity to innovation may seem simple at times. It did for me. You have an idea that solves a problem, and it feels as though the solution is right there in your hands. Yet, I'm not here to object to that. An idea is merely a hypothesis, and it's nothing without being tested. At the University of Rhode Island, we say, think big. But the reason we're known for thinking big is because we take that next step, that step of action, that step of innovation. Grit, determination, perseverance, the actions are what make the difference between an idea and an innovation. I ran into three speed bumps when I was trying to go from creative idea to innovative action. I'm a student athlete, and when I applied to URI, I really had one focus, and it was rowing. I got pretty good, but not much innovation came out of it. <laughs> I focused all my time on rowing, but after a tragic and heartbreaking loss of my dad my freshman year, I was put back into those car rides where I learned how important having passion was, and I knew it was time to find mine. So I went back to the duct tape roots that started that business, and I found that I wanted to learn more about business, and I added that as the first major I truly loved. So from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. I rode, and from 9 a.m. to around 3 I studied business, but the afternoons were mine, and I went back to rowing, but this time in a new way. I tirelessly went through my rowing scores and tried to find where I could get just a little bit better, and then I found a tool called data science. When I added that as a, sec a second major and a third passion, that's where innovation began for me. I've always said that innovation is the intersection of all the things that you're passionate about. So sport, business, and data science, they converge to something called sports science, which is data analytics for athletes in as real time as possible to make them better, stronger, faster, and maybe most importantly, safer. Having found my niche, I had an idea, and I worked with a faculty member at URI to start to develop the first sports science internship program within the athletic department. Because I saw what I was doing, and I saw how much it could help an entire program. But I ran into some personal turmoil at this time. There are better athletes than me, over there. There are better businesswomen than me, and there are better data scientists than me, for sure. So what made me the person to make this idea come to life? What made me the person to innovate? Because it's the center of the three things that I'm most passionate about. It is my niche. That is what got me over my first speed bump and led me straight to my second. <laughs> During my time as a sports science intern, I found myself in a conversation with a fellow student athlete and someone I'm pretty close with. He brought to life the importance of, and a tragic, tragic incident that's going on within athletics and within the athletics world, that is the loss of athletes due to heat-related and cardiac-related incidents. Being a data person, I went straight into the numbers, and I found that in the past 25 years, 68 football players have passed away due to heat-related illness. If it were just one, it would be too many, but that's just one sport. Female cross-country athletes are twice as likely as any other sport to succumb from heat-related illness. So I knew I wanted to tackle this, but 
not because of the numbers, because this is what affects the people that I know and I love. So I came up with another idea, and I wanted to create a shirt with built-in sensors to try to detect and prevent heat-related illness and cardiac incidents. But I didn't really know if it was possible, and I needed some confidence. So to find that, I looked around what was happening at URI, and I very quickly found it. In the engineering department, we had been developing a Bluetooth shirt for newborn babies to detect their vitals. Now, there's a lot of differences between an athlete and a newborn, but the similarities are what gave me the confidence. Newborn babies can't have sticky pads on their skin to detect their vitals because their skin is so sensitive, and athletes would probably just sweat it off. Newborn babies can't have lead wires off of them because it's dangerous, and an athlete can't be tethered to anything. These parallels gave me the confidence that my idea was possible with just a little bit of adaptation. What I discovered is that innovating doesn't necessarily mean inventing. It doesn't mean coming up with something brand new. Sometimes innovation can happen best when you can come up with a new purpose for something that already exists. And that is what got me over my second speed bump. Now my third speed bump was when I had to move from theoretical into actual. I had to actually take the first step of action. And I didn't know which direction to step. Me being me, I wrote a laundry list of all the things that I couldn't do myself, and it was rather long. I needed to adapt biomedical sensors, and I'm not an engineer. I needed to build a shirt that athletes would like to wear, and speaking for myself, I'm rather picky, and so just being able to sew did not nearly qualify myself. The list went on and on, but I just kept going and being honest with myself, and as I went through it, I found that I knew people that could do this. So I went to them after being honest with myself and I was authentic with my list of faults. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it definitely was not the response that I got. I found that when I was authentic with them, it made them believe in me more and it made them want to help me. Doing this helped me create a team that is doing what I love and solving this problem. It's how I found two undergraduate biomedical engineering students to help adapt those sensors and make, them, make our ideas come to life. It helped me find a master's student in textiles who's helping build the shirt that not only protects athletes but protects the sensors so that they can be long-term wear. This is how I developed the support of deans, administrators, faculty, all because I was honest with myself and authentic with them on the help that I needed. Now, my journey is one of action, and it's one of innovation. It was innovative when it was a duct tape hobby as a, chi as a child, and it's innovative now as an entrepreneur with a team. But the biggest takeaway and the biggest lesson that I've learned along the way is that creativity points you in a direction, but innovation is how you get there. Thank you. <laughs>